When I define a vector and a vector space, I don't necessarily have to be locked into this mode of instantiating those vectors in the space as arrows in a plane or in three space or whatever. Um, I can think of them more abstractly. So an example of an abstract vector space is something like the following. P sub n stands for the vector space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. Okay, so let's explore this here. So this is all polynomials of, we'll just say, degree less than or equal to n. Just to remind you, a polynomial is a sum of, let's say, just powers of x, so sum of terms involving x with constant coefficients out front. So for instance, let's consider P3. So P3 then would be the vector space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, in other words, all cubic or lesser degree polynomials. So we'll say all polys of degree less than or equal to three. The vectors, right, the elements in this space are themselves polynomials, and our scalar set, by the way, is still going to be the reals. Okay, so if I look at the polynomial, this is a quadratic, right, because uh, x squared, x squared plus one, that's an element, sure enough, of this vector space P3 it fits the bill. It's a polynomial of degree less than or equal to three. You might also note, right, in terms of our axioms, well, is this really a vector space? Is the zero vector in there? What is the zero vector? The zero vector here is actually just the zero polynomial. In other words, it's the constant zero. So zero is an element of this vector space P3. And it's also worth noting, right, a zero degree polynomial, if you don't know, is a constant, so a number, or a scalar in this case, a first degree polynomial is a linear function, and so forth. But rigorously, you could e quite easily show that the 10 axioms of a vector space are met by P3. All polynomi polynomials, excuse me, of degree less than or equal to three, or more generally, Pn, all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. This is actually no different than the Euclidean space of degree or dimension n plus one. What I've written here is this notation that's called isomorphic. So I've said that these two vector spaces are isomorphic. Isomorphic just means iso meaning same structure, okay? So same morph, same type. So these are actually one and the same vector space. For instance, if I have an nth degree polynomial, if you think about it, an nth degree polynomial has a constant term, a linear term, a quadratic term, etc all the way up to its nth degree term, that is the coefficient associated with x to the n. Well, if you counted up all the slots I could fill as a vector, then I have n plus one total slots to fill. That's no different structurally than the Euclidean space uh, with n plus one dimensions. So let's see that more directly. For P3 then, a vector, okay, again, just means a polynomial in this case, a vector in P3 has how many slots to fill? It has A, B, C, and D, right? It has a constant term, the linear term, the quadratic term, and the cubic term, as I just said. So in other words, when I add polynomials together, what do I do fundamentally? I just add the coefficients together. That's no different than adding vectors and so forth. Where it really gets interesting and where we really begin to sort of harness the true power of vector spaces as a sort of represent, representational system here in mathematics, or as a model, is when we talk about sort of the big one here is the vector space of all real valued functions. Now this is quite different from the previous examples of vector spaces. These previous vector spaces, polynomials, and um, you know, Euclidean spaces are all what are called finite dimensional vector spaces. This is our first instance of an actually an infinite dimensional vector space. Just to give you an example, just about any function, right, you've dealt with in calculus that takes a real value as an input and gives you back a real value as an output would be termed a real valued function. So I could talk about not just polynomials, by the way, polynomials certainly are a subset of these functions, but something like an exponential function or algebraic combinations of exponential functions and trig functions, that together, e to the x times sine x, for instance, would be a real valued function. Let's just call this vector space v, just for short. That would be considered now a vector 
So if I set this equal, let's say, to v, that is a vector in the vector space v of all real valued functions. Very powerful notion indeed. Now, of course, it would be um, beneficial if you, if you wanted to, to check that the 10 axioms of a vector space hold. They do indeed. Um, for instance, you know, what is the zero vector in this vector space of all real valued functions? That would just be the zero function, the constant zero function. Do we get closure if I add one real valued function to another? Do I still maintain sort of the real valuedness if you will, I do. It's still going to be a real valued function, associativity, commutativity, and all those nice algebraic properties definitely hold here.